Hi, I'm Dr. Herb Raymond Schneider. I want to tell you about two breakthrough technologies, high intensity focused ultrasound and 3T MRI, which are going to make a significant difference in the diagnosis and management of prostate cancer and make it much simpler for those patients who have to deal with this disease. Our subject, the treatment of prostate cancer, which I think most of us would agree is a big problem. We know that it's the second leading cause of malignant death in men, but I think you'll see as more of a nuisance than a big problem. This is the prostate. Um, the prostate is a relatively small organ. If we have something that can go wrong with the prostate, it could go wrong in one of these areas or another. And we have to know how to look at those areas to determine what's going on. Our first goal here will be to have early detection. We want to talk uh, about early diagnosis and minimally invasive ways to understand what we're dealing with. There's roughly a quarter of a million new cases of prostate cancer diagnosed in any one year. 34,000, 35,000 people die from it. It's second only behind lung cancer. PSA is very sensitive. That means that if we have a large group of people and we test them with PSA, those who have prostate cancer are going to be found. The SEER data refers to data that's called out of the Medicare information. In the past 20 years, past 20 years, the mortality from prostate cancer uh, had a 42% reduction. And you know what's unique about those 20 years? That's known as the PSA era. PCA3. Prostate cancer antigen 3. What is this? It's a protein. It's produced in normal prostate tissue. But if you happen to have a malignancy in the prostate, it produces a lot more. In this case, it's not a blood test. It's a urine test. What we can say about PCA3 is that if the PCA3 is low, the probability of you having a bad actor prostate cancer is extremely low. But its specificity is very high. What does that mean? It means when it's positive, there's probably trouble. You put those two together, and you have the best chance of finding a significant prostate cancer. Now, we're going to take a look at this literally in a different way. Magnetic resonance imaging, we now have a three Tesla magnet. With the three Tesla magnet, we can look inside of organs. This is called functional imaging techniques. It means we're looking not only at the shape, but what's going on and why it's going on. This is the MRI. When you put a patient in the MRI, it takes the electrically charged atoms and it takes them out of their normal position. What happens is when the magnet's turned off, they, the atoms switch back to a position that they were in before. They emit a radio signal that can be picked up and then processed by a computer and paint a picture of what's going on in that organ. And dynamic contrast imaging is the way that it's displayed is different in abnormal tissue than it is in normal tissue. I'm going to refer to this periodically. There have been apples that we have decided we wanted to eat, and we've cut through it, and we find a brown spot in the apple. We're going to talk about a prostate that has a bad spot in it. This is the prostate. If you really stare at this, there's something wrong. Look right there. That doesn't look the same as the rest of the tissue. We have a suspicion that this prostate has a problem because PC, PCA3 was elevated, the PSA is elevated. They did one of these different arrays of imaging. Uh, this happened to be uh, the contrast imaging, and oh my goodness, look at it, it picked up contrast in a big hurry. Let's look at it with uh, diffusion-weighted imaging. It's dark. There's cancer in this prostate. Well, there's cancer here, and there's cancer here. 
Uh, very small lesions, very well differentiated, low grade disease. Could that be insignificant cancer? Look over here, this just jumps off the screen at you. So this has a high grade Gleason score and it's a sizable lesion. We call this the index cancer. It's the one that has the bad cells in it in fairly large volume. People do have bad prostate cancer disease and it moves out of the confines of the organ and into the tissues where you don't want it. We call that metastatic. And you do genomic studies. What we find is the genomics of this cell and that cell are identical. And yet, the genomics of these cells are very different. Image-guided prostate biopsy using magnetic resonance imaging. We took an ultrasound, we put it in the rectum, and now we're going to integrate the image of the MRI and the image of the ultrasound. That's called co-registration. It's where we can interpose ultrasound and magnetic resonance imaging one on top of another. So that one area on one image is the same as the area on another image. We did biopsies of the areas where we knew the lesions were because we saw them. We had co-registration. The bigger lesion, the one that I was showing you, had the most disease and it had the highest grade of cancer. And we looked at the little lesions, it wasn't much in there. It was well differentiated cancer. That's insignificant. Now you've probably heard the statement that more people, men, die with prostate cancer than of prostate cancer. Why? Because they have what is now becoming known as insignificant prostate cancer. Well, this is trouble. This is an index lesion, poorly differentiated, uh, aggressive disease. This, we're just not ready to put it in the green package yet. So we've got two lesions here that need treatment. The rest of them, we're not going to do anything with. We'll watch them. The MRI-guided biopsies picked up the significant prostate cancers and ignored the insignificant prostate cancer. The MRI is very sensitive to what we really need to know, active surveillance. What is active surveillance? That means we look at these patients with a critical eye, and we do it regularly. But we really believe that MRI has opened a window that nobody had opened before now. HIFU, high intensity focused ultrasound. Now, we're gonna talk about, from here at this point out, minimally invasive methods of treating prostate cancer, and we're gonna look for significant prostate cancer to treat. How does it work? Is there anybody in this room that hasn't had a magnifying glass in their hand and focused the sun on a piece of paper or a piece of wood or started a fire with just that simple maneuver? It's a couple things about that you really have to remember to understand high intensity focus ultrasound. When you focus that on a piece of paper, you can put your hand right between that piece of paper and the magnifying glass and the paper that you've now set on fire, your hand's cool, doesn't get hot. In this case, the sun is coming in at broad angles and it isn't focused till it gets to a, a point that's the focal length of that lens. Here, we have ultrasound being generated and that ultrasound is being focused just like the rays of the sun, only this time we're generating that in a very specific type of instrumentation. We can aim it at the bad cells in the prostate. It doesn't hurt the cells that aren't bad that you don't aim it at. We can generate with ultrasound what you do with a magnifying glass. This is the HIFU system. Uh, this is our console, it's basically a computer. Here's a screen that gives us a lot of information. The best way we have to look at the prostate at the moment is to put a probe in the rectum and take an ultrasound picture of the prostate. Okay, now this is the console, and what we're doing is we've got that probe in the rectum, and we've just delivered ultrasound energy here, and it's created a heat band that is high to the point that it will damage the tissues in this location in a positive way. It's bad tissue and we want to destroy it. Down here, we're measuring the heat on the rectum 
And that's in that range between the magnifying glass and the focal point of where the energy is coming. That's cool, and we want to keep it cool. Nerve sparing. Why would you want to spare nerves? Those nerves drive important things like the shutoff valve on the uh, urinary system so you don't have wet pants. The ability to have sexual activity is guided by these nerves, so you don't want to destroy them. Well, how can we keep that from happening? We use ultrasound. We know right where those muscles are, the nerves are right with them. And we can direct our therapy right up to the edge here and not involve those structures. So we can do what we refer to as nerve sparing. So high intensity focused ultrasound, what is it? It allows us to put heat in a very specific place. We can guide it with image. And what it really is, is a precise computer controlled acoustical scalpel. Targeted focal therapy. You remember the bad spot in the apple? We want to treat the bad spot in the apple. Leave the rest of the apple alone. We want to focus on the significant cancer. How can we do that? And advanced diagnostic imaging studies, again, a partnership, in this case, between urologists and radiologists, is producing some answers. Here is a focal cancer in the prostate, has the characteristics of an index cancer. The rest of this prostate doesn't look bad. We know where the problem is, and we direct our heat to those very precise areas. It's like painting this area with a very tiny paintbrush. Precision. Instead of treating the whole prostate, this was the area that was deemed to be the bad spot in the apple, the bad spot in the prostate. So we treated what we knew was bad. We left the rest of the prostate alone. These people not only can feel normal, be normal, most of the people who have focal therapy have ejaculation as well. There's a thing called a trifecta, which means you've, you've taken out the disease and you haven't destroyed any of the functions. In this case, potency, their capacity to be sexually competent, their urinary control was the same as it was before. The trifecta is you cure the disease, you don't disturb any of the function. How does HIFU apply in the future? Well, those patients that were doing active surveillance who have insignificant cancers, the idea of having a cancer really getting to them, they want to do something about it. Well, if you have a treatment that you can identify the lesion, knock it out, and not cause any problems, wouldn't you at least think about doing it? Salvage therapy, radiation failure is a possibility with high-intensity focused ultrasound. This has been used around the world. It's not approved in the United States. What can you do if this might be something you want to consider. Well, at this point, we are treating patients offshore. In this case, we went to Cancun. They really have a beautiful setup. If you decide that you've got a problem, then we get the people involved who are aligned with Sonicare. This information is all handled by a group of healthcare professionals. Well, there you have it a new way of looking at a difficult problem. We really think this is going to make a difference for anyone who has this diagnosis. Please contact our office. We'll be happy to give you all the information and answer all of your questions.